love space. You'll want to be looking up in the sky the next few days, keeping your eye out for the Lurid Meteor Shower. That's right, our Brian Bachman explores how meteor showers occur in this moment of science. We're here at the Roper Mountain Science Center in the Hooper Planetarium, getting everybody ready for the Lyrid Meteor Shower. And to give us the lowdown on best viewing, the science behind it, I want to bring in Planetarium Specialist Maggie Connolly. Maggie, thanks for having us. Good to see you again. Uh, so let's start with um, you know the Lyrid Meteor Shower. It's one of several throughout the year. Um, give us some of the science behind it. Uh, what are some of the inner workings? Absolutely. So um, when we talk about things orbiting the sun, the Earth orbits in a very constant orbit, but common orbits are kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so occasionally as the Earth is orbiting the sun, it will end up in one of the comet orbits with some debris left over, like rocks and things like that. And those rocks will then enter our atmosphere. Uh, when that happens, there is a lot of resistance and the rocks heat up and the air around it heats up and that air will heat up so much that we'll see like those bright streaks, mm -hmm. which is, you know, generally what we call shooting stars. That's where we get our meteors. shooting stars. And so we're going now from the beginnings of the uh, shower here into the peak this weekend. Uh, what kind of... Uh, how many meteors per hour can people expect to see as we kind of go into that peak? Yeah, so when we're looking at the peak, which is about Saturday night into Sunday morning, uh, on average, we can see about 10 to 20 meteors. Might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less, but that's kind of our average for the peak time. And you had also mentioned uh, not only is the weather looking fortunately mostly conducive, but um, in terms of uh, the moon not necessarily going to be interfering with viewing either. Yes, yeah, so the moon is moving from a waning crescent to a new moon. By the time the uh, Lyrids are over, it will be a waxing crescent, which is basically just a little sliver. So it's not like we have a big full moon that's taking up a bunch of light or you know giving off a lot of light that uh, will affect our viewing. And so for folks who are looking to sit out, get their viewing, what are some best times, best places to be? Absolutely. So you want to, the unfortunately, the best time <laughs> is in the early morning. So we're looking at pre-dawn. For example, Sunday morning, about 4.30 is what they're recommending. Um, you can probably see them in the late evening, but again, morning is going to be best. You want to find a dark spot, bring a chair, bring a blanket, just get cozy mm -hmm. and look up. <laughs> all right. Well, Maggie, thanks so much for having us again for all that great information and uh, brew a cup of coffee. You heard it here. Get out there and uh, happy viewing. At least the weather over the next few days looks like it will be cooperating.